just a little preliminary. Having watched the uh, video, it's clear that I mumble a lot and say okay a lot. Apologies for that and apologies for the fairly crude editing. This isn't what I do. Hope you find it useful. If you're speaking, want to steal my ideas, they can send me loads of royalties for the rest of you free and gratis, and I hope it works for you. Happy flock. Okay, the purpose of this video is to show you how to convert the Speedlink Black Widow POTAS hands on throttle NSD from potentiometer to Hall Effect I6. The main reason for doing this is because there's a fundamental design flaw in this in the sense that if you operate, for example, the aileron to full travel, before you get to full travel, you'll find you'll run out of output signal and the last part of travel does nothing. Same if you go the other way, the last part of travel does nothing. And same with elevator, and I'll explain why this happens in a moment. You pull this back, you'll find a run out of output signal there more travel to go. It's very confusing. You expect full travel, especially with a dog fight or something like that. You expect full travel to give you full deflection. It happens before you get there, which does two things. It wastes the travel, fools you, but it's just a bad design flaw, isn't it? Okay. Okay, the tools you will need to carry out this mod are indelible marker pen, You'll need to mark the pole with the magnets. I'll come to that later. Pointed nose pliers, perhaps a smaller set than this, but this will do the job. Cross point screwdriver, medium size, medium to small. A very small cross point screwdriver, unless your medium one's got a very sharp, fine point to it, you might get away with that. Stanley knife or craft knife, there's a small amount of plastic cutting to be done, but not much. I sometimes find a cocktail stick useful for grabbing bits of blue tack, which you're likely to need during the process. And super glue. The paper gluing down the uh, magnets on their mount. You probably could get away with blue tack, but super glue is probably a better idea. Ubiquitous soldering iron and solder. Inevitable. Okay, let's look at the materials we're going to need. You're going to need two hall sensors. More details on this in a minute. It's essentially Sorry if it's out of focus, but that's just the way this webcam is. It's essentially a three-wire device, just like the potentiometer. It'll have a supply positive, it'll have a ground, and it will have an output, as you would have an output from the wiper of a pot. You're going to need some eight or nine millimeter new earth magnets. They're very strong. I'll give you more details about these in a minute. You'll see I've marked both of these on uh, with, a, with a pole. And you'll notice that the pole of one is, of course, attracted to the pole of the other. Now, these discs are magnetized across the surface. So, here's one pole. Here's the opposite pole. Here's the opposite pole that attracts to it, and therefore this pole here matches this pole up here. We'll call them north, they may not be, it doesn't really matter. But they are not like the conventional magnet, which has the south pole on underneath, north pole on top. They are magnetised across the surface, not across the layer. Very, very important. You'll need a couple of these. Now these are non-magnetic flat top pins. Very easy. I don't know if you're going to see though, but uh, I'll do it like this. Okay, it's a flat topped non magnetic pin. Okay, now some detail on the magnet. Uh, you can see where I got mine from in the UK. The website is called First Four Magnets. A bit of free advertising says so sent me a single sample initially to test it all with. It is a neo molybdenum, oh, I don't know, the part number. 
is an F322DM, 8mm diameter by 1mm thick. And as I say, you can get those online. If you look this one up, even if you don't buy it from First World Magnets, you, you'll understand what it is you're looking for. Not very clear for the focus. But uh, that's the part number. You can look that up as a reference. But that's what you need. Okay, some detail on the hall sensor. This is the device. You'll see on the package, there's a, a vertical chamfer this side, and the same on the other side, and the sensing face is between them. The back of it is flat right across, that's not the sensing face. Three pins, pin one is five volts, pin two is ground, and pin three is the variable output. It is called an A1301UA, UA being the package. The other package that you can get and we don't want is uh, the LH. So it's the, A1301UA the A that you want. Okay. And I got that from an outfit called bitsbox.co.uk. It's not an advertising recommendation. It's just that that's where I got them from if you're really stuck. But I'm sure Googling will find you plenty of other solutions. So this thing works by rotating this disc around in front of it. Going in between from North Pole to Neutral to South Pole. One pole will cause the sense lock to conduct full voltage from the output pin. The other pole can cause it to conduct zero and anywhere in between will be an appropriate level depending on the position of that magnet. This component, flat head pin, non-magnetic, this one's aluminium, you can get from your local haberdashery shop to after workshop these jing buttons have the jing button on the front and you bang the rivet in the back, in from the back, through the from the inside of your jeans. It's the rivet you want. It's just about two pounds ten or two pounds fifty, four dollars. So we're heading towards about ten dollar cost to modify this thing from a passable one to something that should be quite reasonable. Okay, so now let's look into why we have to do this mod. Um, basically the open thing up first. And there are several screws to take place. I should really take mine out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Last one goes. The base lifts off very easily. Careful not to lift the screws. Tip them over, tip them out. Put them in there as a tray. Put it somewhere else nice and safe. Or you won't knock it over and lose them. look here at the aileron assembly, when I move the stick left and right, you can probably see this lower part of the stick arching with the stick movement. And it sits into this slot in this plastic block, which is riding on this linear pot, and this actually contains the wiper. And look at the linear pot later, a little more closely. You can see as this arc, this part arcs from side to side, it translates that into linear movement. <coughs> this assembly here, the block, the pot, are all held in place by these two screws. And they're in um, slots so that when things manufactured they can actually move this whole centre left and right to get this pot centred properly. Now I've already taken off the elevator one because I've been messing about with this piece of the cylinder and the um, hall device. Put that down for a minute and I'll show you what I took out of there. See that it is the same part there is a camera as there. And 
we have the pot slider going backwards and forwards along this black carbon track. And what happens when you go to full deflection on your stick is that it goes off the end of the track. Same the other end. This whole movement under control of the joystick is 20 millimeters. The track is only about 15, 16 mils. So very poor design. And rather than scrap all of these and replace them at probably about 50p a shot and have a decent stick, replacing them with a longer track, they've chosen to do nothing about it. So what we're going to do something about it, we are going to change this whole assembly for a wall sensor and a magnet. Very simple. Just show you what I've been messing with because it is messy. When I move the stick from side to side, it actually moves on an axis. You can probably see that I have a piece of blue tack on the end of the axis of the flat this magnet stuck on top of it. Okay, and blue tape to a post that happens we can bring in there is the ball sensor. And as I rotate the aileron, the disc magnet rotates across the face of the sensor. And I'll explain a bit more about that sensor and the disc magnet and how that works next. Now before we go any further, I need to speak to you about wires that are connected to this thing when you take it out. There are solder tags, one there and two there. And you can probably see that the inner ones feed the pot, or rather the track. And the end one is a pickup from the wiper. Now, I've already checked and marked up the polarity of the supply to the track. The single end tag here is positive and the wire colour from it was red. The other end, where the inner tag is, the innermost of the two, is the ground, and the colour for that wire is white. The signal wire coming off was blue, but the polarity is important. To get it wrong, your reverse voltage, your sensor, and blow it up. Now, the reason I make such a fuss about the polarity, apart from not blowing up the sensor, is because when you look at the aileron ball, we were looking at the elevator, you find that the positive is at the inner of the double eye, double eye at end. On the elevator, it was here, positive. On the aileron, it was here. And this is the ground. So it's the other way around. And if I remove that, Taking the screws out, you can see that the single end eyelet, which is ground, is orange. Positive, which is the innermost of those two, is yellow. And the pick off colour is green. So, a little bit more confusion there. But if yours is the same as this, then the parrot is probably correct, but do be sure.